let's take a look at how the F-16 XL could become the F-36 King Snake. Recently, the Air Force announced that it may be interested in obtaining a new, low-cost option to replace its fleet of F-16s. Calling for a clean sheet design of a new either 4th and a half gen or 5th gen minus fighter. The role that today's F 16s play in the United States Air Force cannot be understated. While the F 22 and F 35 are the Air Force's 5th generation frontline fighters, the F 16 is by far the most numerous fighter the Air Force operates, with more F 16 examples than all F 15s, F 22s, and F 35s combined. As a result, you could make the argument that the F-16 is the backbone of today's Air Force. And while the USAF's F-16s have served with distinction during their operational lifetime, today's Air Force leaders feel that the current version of the Viper, which have an average age of over 25 years, lack the mission system's capability and network software sophistication to be a serious contender. Additionally, the Air Force has stated that the goal is to have 386 squadrons, Assuming an average of 20 aircraft per squadron, that's 7,720 aircraft and plenty of new airframes that need to be produced. To further understand the intended role that the F-16's eventual replacement will play, we need to look at what the Air Force has traditionally referred to as its high-low mix. The idea is that the Air Force operates two types of aircraft, ultra-advanced, expensive aircraft which due to their complexity and cost tend to have a lower mission capable rate and are less numerous in number but less complex and less expensive but more reliable aircraft which are also available in greater numbers. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, the F-15 and F-16 held these two respective high-low roles. Today, the F-22 and F-35 can be said to fall into the more complex but less numerous fighter category. However, as previously mentioned, there is, as of yet, no replacement for the F-16. Given the significance and numbers that this new fighter will have, this video will be the first in a series where we take a look at potential replacements for the Viper. Today we will look at what some aviation experts have proposed, the F-36 Kingsnake. Using 3D models and some assumptions about the proposed design, I'll give you my thoughts on the concept. The Kingsnake design is based on the F-16 XL, which initially began its life as a technology demonstrator for General Dynamics and was entered into a 1980s competition against what would become the F-15E Strike Eagle. At the time, the F-16 XL lost out to the F-15E for several reasons. First, it was felt that only having one engine on what was to be a long-range interdictor aircraft was too risky. Second, the F-15E was essentially a modified two-seat F-15D trainer, meaning that the cost to put into production was lower as compared to the mostly new design of the F-16 XL. The F-15E itself is an amazing aircraft, and as an example of its effectiveness, there is now a new modernized version known as the EX. You can watch a dedicated video all about the EX. I'll leave a link in the description below. Getting back to the XL, its most obvious feature was its double delta or cranked arrow wing. The XL's wing had an inboard leading edge sweep angle of 70 degrees and an outboard or cranked section of 50 degrees. To accommodate the larger wing, the XL's fuselage was lengthened by over 50 inches as compared to the standard F-16. This wing design offered several advantages over existing F-16s. First, the combination of a larger wing can store more fuel and is more aerodynamically efficient, providing a greater increase in range. In the case of the F-16 XL as compared to the F-16, this translated to storing 82% more fuel and flying 40% farther. Additionally, the double delta wings improved aerodynamic efficiency allowed the F-16 XL to super cruise. Significant because this allowed the XL to fly supersonic without using afterburner and as a result greatly extending its range. And lastly, the larger wing area allows for greater payload capacity and more hardpoints to mount ordnance. In the case of the XL, this meant an incredible 27 hardpoints, which were divided as follows. One centerline station, two wingtip stations, 16 wing stations with a capacity of 750 pounds each, four semi-recessed AIM-120 AMRAM stations under the fuselage, two wing heavy wet stations, 
and two Chin Lantern Stations. This allowed the F-16XL to carry an impressive 15,000 pounds of payload, and given its larger wing with more fuel capacity, the F-16XL could carry it much farther than the production F-16. And as we have seen with the F-15EX, having more weapons available can assist other forward deployed assets like the F-35 in an encounter. Now that we have seen what the F-16XL was capable of, let's take a look at the proposed F-36 Kingsnake. The Kingsnake would use the same basic airframe as the XL, but given advancements in materials, engines, and avionics be an even deadlier package. For starters, the higher top and cruising speeds of the Kingsnake as compared to the F-35 would be an asset in the Beyond Visual Range or BVR environment. This is due to the fact that any missile fired from an aircraft inherits the initial speed of the aircraft when it is fired. Flying faster means that you effectively can extend the range of the missile. Being able to supercruise is also a tremendous plus here as not using afterburner significantly lowers the aircraft heat signature. Depending on its engine, the Kingsnake should be able to comfortably supercruise somewhere in the Mach 1.4 to Mach 2 range. As with the F-16, the Kingsnake would be a multi-role fighter, essentially capable of carrying virtually all fighter-sized air-deployed weapons in the arsenal. This includes air-to-air, air-to-ground, and air-to-ship weapons. Additionally, the proven M61 20mm Vulcan cannon would be retained from the F-16XL, allowing the Kingsnake to have true multi-mission flexibility to attack air and ground targets as needed. One of the least considered or mentioned abilities for fighters is on station or loiter time. Just like the F-15EX, the Kingsnake, due to its wing design, will be able to carry large amounts of fuel, allowing for longer patrols or time on station to react to developing threats. And while tankers are always an option for air-to-air -air refueling, in contested airspace they may have to be positioned too far away to make any meaningful impact. And while the double delta wing does provide a higher instantaneous turn rate, it also incurs a rapid energy loss in sustained turns. Keep in mind, however, that the Kingsnake is not intended as a pure dogfighter, but rather a multi-role support aircraft that can be available in large numbers, with forward operating F-22s and F-35s performing deep penetration missions in highly contested airspace. Additionally, the Kingsnake's twin tails could also provide additional stability versus the XL's single tail. When it comes to the Kingsnake engine, there are several options. One could be the GE F110 GE129, which is currently being used on the F-15EX. However, since the Kingsnake only uses one engine, a better option may be a simplified red non-thrust vectoring version of the F-119 found on the F-22. While restarting the F-119 engine production would take a little over three years, this would have the added benefit of helping the F-22 operate longer. If this route is taken, King Snakes in testing would have to borrow F-119s from existing Raptors, but it seems like it would be a win-win for both aircraft in the long term. For sensors, the King Snake can use the AN-APG-83 AESA radar, which is an advanced and already in-production fire control system that makes use of features found in both the F-22 and F-35. Along with this, an infrared search and track or IRST pod would be integrated into the fuselage. To keep costs nominal, the Kingsnake could make use of a widescreen HUD along with a JHMCS or Joint Helmet Mounted Queuing System. The combination of the widescreen HUD and JHMCS would be more cost effective than the F-35's integrated helmet system. By using existing technologies and basing the Kingsnake's airframe on the already tested F-16XL, a lower cost but effective fighter could be mass produced soon and deliver the number of new airframes the Air Force desperately needs. Some components of the airframe could even be 3D printed. Additionally, while not intended as a stealth aircraft, given the advancements in materials, parts of the Kingsnake could be made of composites both saving weight and potentially lowering the radar cross-section of the aircraft. This, coupled with advancements in avionics, should make the Kingsnake a survivable platform in highly contested environments. And lastly, there are already reports of a new prototype 6th generation fighter flying. Could this new jet along with the Kingsnake become part of the new high-low mix? What do you think? Is the Kingsnake a good design proposal? Should the Air Force look into a new 4th plus generation fighter? Let me know in the comments below. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe and click on the bell for notifications. Stay safe and see you next time.